three. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Style Masterclass Podcast. I'm your host, Ms. J. This is a special podcast, part of our ongoing series called The Mentors. I have a friend and a colleague with me today, Molly Claire. I'm going to let her introduce herself, and then we're going to dive into our topic. Introduce yourself to the people. Hello. Uh, I am Molly Claire. I am a master life and business coach. I, after building my own coaching practice, I decided to help coaches build their business. So that's what I do. I love my business. I love helping women to be able to build a business that's profitable and meaningful and um, help them become the best version of who they are. So that's it. That's me. I like Is that it. enough? Like Did it. you want more? <laughs> <laughs> we always want more. And I do want to dig into your story a little bit because like, sure. I know a little bit of your background, but the people, the people <laughs> don't yet in terms of like how you found coaching and mm -hmm. like what your thoughts were about building a business before you built the business that you've built. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of crazy to think back. So I became a coach in 2014 and I kind of feel like I was a completely different person then in some ways, right? Like the older we get, I think we see how more of us comes out and we're always who we were. But at the same time, when I look at that place in my life and I think about the way I thought about the world and money and possibility and possibility for me, it was just so limited and uh, it's always limited, right? There's still limits now, but it's just, um, I mean, it, it's when I started out, I didn't know how to build a business. I didn't know what this looked like. I didn't really know what I thought I might be capable of. And um, I think you know this. I, I at the time had, uh, you know, my three kids and was also starting to um, get go through divorce and become a single mom. So it was kind of a lot of things happening all at once, right? Um, but I think that as I look back now, it's so interesting to see how all of these little things in life set us up to grow and learn and um and just make a bigger impact. I don't think I actually answered your question at all. No, but, but you did because I think like it's important to know sometimes like the background story of people that we look up to or that we admire. Like yeah. you're one of, you know, the leaders in our space. You're one of the teachers in our space. You teach a lot of new coaches how to build businesses, how to become practitioners of the craft that is coaching. Yeah. So yeah. I think sometimes we forget that there was like a whole human life that was left <laughs> before right? we got to this place where sometimes yes. we end up getting put on pedestals and like, y'all need to know, like there's limiting beliefs now, there's limiting beliefs then for sure. Uh, and they will continue. Yes. Well, you know, I was just mentioning after this, um, after we record this, I'm doing a webinar and, you know, in my webinar, there's a little bit where I kind of talk about my background and I have these little arrows in the slide presentation that point to all these beautiful things, you know, built a six figure business, scaled to seven figures, wrote a best selling book, and they all seem very beautiful and they are beautiful and meaningful to me. But there's so much underneath and between all of that that that's the part we forget. We just see the bullet points and we don't realize that the truth is for everyone listening to this, whether you're a coach building a business or you're just expanding your life, there's a lot of messiness along the way underneath, right? <laughs> a lot. Yes. yes. And on these internet streets, we only really see people's bullet points. Absolutely. We get highlight reels. And I think yes. sometimes it's, up to us as leaders to be like, okay, and here's the human part. Dude, and here's lean this, in. what's real. That's <laughs> right. And, you know, as you were saying that, um, you know, Rachel Hart, who, you know, she's a, she's a fantastic coach and was speaking at an event uh, last spring where I was attending. And as I heard her talking about her accomplishments, I noticed myself thinking, wow, she's so amazing and so much more amazing than me. And what's ironic is when I thought about it, she and I had done most of the same things. But I think not only do we only see this picture here that's bright and shiny, but we minimize our own selves and our own accomplishments. And we always think it's better on someone else. Do you know what I mean? Oh, no, I totally know what you mean. And I think like part of what 
when we chatted, I was on her, I, I was on Molly's podcast. So I will definitely link to that. So you can go check that out. But one of the things that we talked to sort of afterward was like being the like messy mentor who yes. has like mm-hmm. real humanity going on and mm-hmm. showing that side, but also giving the lesson of it. Cause we're not just showing yes. like messiness for the sake of messiness or vulnerability for the sake of vulnerability, but like, yes. and here, my darling dears is a lesson in like not comparing yourself in a way that's not useful. Right. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, speaking about being mentors. And I know we've kind of talked about this idea of being the mentor can bring sort of different challenges, right? Or perceived challenges, our experience of it and um, can feel sometimes, I know I've found myself really creating a lot of pressure. Like uh, I have a high standard to hold because if I'm telling these coaches more is possible, this is possible, then I've really got to have it together, hold it together, keep it together, which is, of course, not a useful way of thinking. Um, But I think it can be common to feel that way. And and something I know that I remind myself of and um, and my clients as well as their hope helping their clients is to be to be real and to also challenge yourself to always excel is going to be, I think, the best example you can be to those around you. Yeah. I like that. I want to talk about that pressure point because I think Mm -hmm. like whether you consider yourself a mentor or teacher or just a leader in an organization, I have a lot of high achieving women who Mm -hmm. top of their game, they're leading the humans. And I think that pressure part Mm -hmm. that internal pressure part, I think it doesn't get talked about quite enough. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Probably not. And it, and it's real, right? So, and it can be lonely and all of those things. So how do you manage like maybe the pressure to, you know, maybe perform at a high level because you Mm -hmm. are in a position of leadership Mm -hmm. or training or teaching? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, so this last year has been really interesting for me. Um, I dissolved my partnership business and in a sense, have really felt like I'm starting over in a way, starting over, but not right. But in my mind, it's like, okay, we're, you know, now it's like foundational again, it's doing all the things. And I definitely noticed that I had this sense of, you know what, I owe it to my clients and my followers to really do this. And I think in some ways that can be useful and positive if it comes from a place of I am determined to lead the way and show people what's possible whereas that other little flavor of it that can sneak in is is kind of a almost a pressure cooker that can shut you down or that can just make you explode right (laughs) like I can't take this pressure um and I'll just say in this last year it's been a really great experience for me to notice the debilitating pressure and work to release it and step into my humanness and and really embrace this idea that I really do get to be an example for these coaches. Because if I'm going all in right now, which I did, it's like, I'm going for it. Like I'm throwing caution to the wind. I am going to say this is going to happen no matter what. I'm not going to shrink because I'm scared. And, and by me doing that, even potentially failing again and again right in front of people, what better example can you have? Because isn't it inspiring when you see someone who fails in front of you and keeps going and overcomes? That's so much more inspiring than just the pretty bullet points, I think. I think so too, but I think like, well, I like, it's so funny because as a spectator, we're like, oh, you know, she was so real. She was so authentic. Like we say these, we throw these words around. Right. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, I'd really admire this in this person. But for me, mm-hmm. I'm not allowed to fail publicly. And if this is my mm-hmm. second go round, like for you or mm-hmm. for serial entrepreneurs that are listening or people who've tried multiple careers, it's like, but this time, this time has to be perfect. Yeah. And like, how do we decline that invitation? Yeah. Uh huh. Sorry, what was that last question? Like, how do we decline that invitation to Mm -hmm. like, because it's nuanced, right? On the one hand, to be like, I admire this in you and I'm not allowed to do it for me. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Um, you know, I, I feel like I wish I had a better answer than this. I feel like this is like not the best answer, but it's the true answer is that in a way, um, I know for me that being, it's like, I say pushed up against a wall, but, but not in a negative way. When I have something that this is an absolutely has to happen for me, it puts a lot of determination in me. So meaning like, for example, when I started, you know, building my business as I was going through a divorce and becoming a single mom and all of that, it was like, it is unacceptable for me to do anything other than create an amazing quality of life for me and my kids. And so it was like, this is an absolute. And that pushed me to keep going rather than go to a negative place. And I guess in relation to this, I would kind of say the same thing. It was like, I just decided it's not an option for me to not succeed in rebuilding and setting an example for these coaches. And in order to do that, I had to be real. I had to be willing to fail because if I wasn't, I wouldn't be able to be the example that I want to be. Yeah. Sense? Yeah. No, it totally makes sense. And I love that you use the word determination because it's like one of my favorite emotions to pull from. Mm -hmm. And I teach a thing called gumption and gumption has three parts, initiative, determination, and courage. And I think the de determination part, like I want to pause there because I think sometimes we think it's going to be confidence or bravado or like sheer will that's going to like get us motivated. And I mm -hmm. think those emotions are lovely. <laughs> Sometimes, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think determination is such a useful emotion. So one thing we talk about here is like your thoughts, create your feelings. I know you teach the same thing. Like what are some thoughts that you use to help generate determination? I mean, you I gave us a few, but I don't know if there's some you practice. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't, I don't have like a set of um, like mantras or thoughts that I practice for determination. I think for me, it's more a matter of really being clear on what I want and what matters to me. And I think when you're clear on what you want and what matters, like really clear, right? Where it is in you and you're aligned, um, that I think just this inherent commitment comes and then flows the determination. And so, I mean, like for you know, for my clients and for your listeners, one of the things I think is absolutely fundamental to do in our life is to really think about what matters to us, really understand what we want and desire by first giving ourselves permission to want and desire, and then to really have it at the forefront of our mind. Because I think when you can, well, first, when you can do that, there's value in that, right? And then when you can open up to believing it's possible, it's like you can reach it. It's right there. That's when that determination kicks in. I love that. Like I have a question, and this is going to sound like so basic, but I know this is probably like a natural, normal next question for a lot of people. It's like, but how do I keep it front of mind? Mm -hmm. Like I'm humaning. I have kids. Totally. I have fur babies. I have a career. I have a business, whatever they've got going on. How do we keep that mm -hmm. commitment front of mind when, you know, mm -hmm. the world is continuing on whether or not we have our commitment? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's like when we, okay, I have this, this example that I use all the time because there's this show called undercover billionaire. Don't know oh, if I you've love heard that of show. It. Okay. Right. Did we already talk about this? Maybe we talked No, about we have it. not. We totally have not. I love that show. Okay, go ahead. So it was like the first, the first, um, what is it? Uh, season or whatever, right? And this, this billionaire is left with $100, an old truck, no contacts in his phone. And he's supposed to build a business worth a million dollars in 90 days, right? And every episode, he sets this goal that seems crazy. And he's sure he's going to do it. And he says, this is what I'm going to do. And this is going to be amazing. He's like all in, right? Episode goes on. He doesn't make the goal. And of all the episodes in the entire season, there is one time that he meets his goal. 
And what you see time and again is every time he doesn't meet the goal, which is a lot of what we do in life and building a business is not meeting the goal, not meeting the goal, not meeting the goal. Every time he doesn't meet the goal, he feels it. And you hear him and you see him saying, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't believe this. This is a huge setback. He experiences it and he doesn't allow those thoughts or feelings to take him away from the goal. It's a moment in time. And then the very next moment is determining what's next. And so I think in answer to your question, we're all going to feel discouraged. We're all going to feel hopeless. Things aren't going to work out. And it doesn't really matter if we have funks or if we slump or if we doubt. It's fine. It's no problem. The question is, what's the step you take next? Because I think recommitting and getting back on that path, that's really the key. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I like it's y'all, if you have not seen that show, I highly recommend you go watch it. I, what always sticks out to me is he went and salvaged tires. Yes. <laughs> like among other things, among other things, like talk about being like literally being scrappy. Like dude was not taking no in terms of like the bigger picture. No, like he figured it out. He had yes. literally no money. And some of y'all have like way more means than that. And I'm not suggesting you go out and get, you know, scrap yard tires. You do you boo always, but like just the like thinking out of the box, like he didn't have to do it one particular way to get the funds to start the next step. Yeah. That was crazy pants. Mm -hmm. Amazing to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you brought that up. It's his brain, right? It's like you see someone that has something in life you want, right? A quality of life, um, you know, abundance, relationships, whatever it is, right? You see someone that has something and the reason any of us have anything good or bad or indifferent in our life is because of the way we think. It's what we decide to create. And I know that's like, oh, that sounds like all fine and dandy, but it's kind of true. It's really true. It's really true. And I think yeah. like it's a mindset, right? So I, my people are huge action takers. I'm assuming mm -hmm. your folks are too. They're oh, like, yes. <laughs> Like, tell me the action plan. Give me the next steps. And I think sometimes as mentors, we have to decline like, nay, nay, dear friend, you know what to do. I'm mm -hmm. here to help you with your brain. But how do we stay like in the like, okay, what's next as opposed to maybe over ruminating about a failed action plan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that um, I like habits and plans. And so any time for me, like I just know I've experienced disappointment and failure and discouragement enough times in my life to know that it's never going to last. And so when I'm experiencing that, sometimes I simply remind myself, hey, 24 hours ago, you were feeling really positive about this. And it's just 24 hours later. So what you're feeling right now is not going to last. So I'll have a plan, right? I'll have a practice or a habit. I also am very aware of the things that bring me inspiration and encouragement, going for a walk, listening to a podcast, talking to a friend. And so for me anyway, personally, when I'm in a funk or if I'm spiraling downward, it's not very often for me that I'm going to be able to go inside and really just dig myself out of it. Now, some people can do that, but for me, what I like to do is I like to have things out here in my world that naturally bring that out inside of me, right? Because I know, yes, it has to happen inside of me, but I know it's going to be pretty easy. If I go and click onto this podcast that always inspires me, I've just used a tool in my life to help my internal world. Okay. I, I love that you touched upon this because I think oftentimes when we're into self-help or we you know, thought work or the work as people mm -hmm. like to refer to them, like very mystical, <laughs> the work, I think there's this idea that like everything has to be so internalized or it's not good enough. Right. We didn't yeah. self-help good enough because right. we had to rely on something external to us to help support us, prop us up, get us out of a funk, get us out of a blue period. And I'm like you, I, for me, it has to be really auditory. So I'll put on my favorite gospel music. I'll like mm -hmm. move around. Like I have to get out of my freaking head sometimes, mm -hmm. but I think there's mm -hmm. this, like, it's, you didn't self-help good enough because it didn't come purely internally. 
Right, right. Like I shouldn't need anything or anyone. Who says? We are human beings designed to connect. And it's not like if I have the things that I know are going to help me, I'm taking ownership of my experience, right? I'm not putting it on anyone else or saying, oh, somebody come magically cheer me up or help me. No, I'm saying, you know what? Being intentional about my life means I have a plan and I take into account that I am human. And I remember talking to my sister one time about, I don't even remember what it was, but you know, I was, I was so worried and I was going on and on and I was kind of spiraling. And she said to me, Molly, it's just not a good day to think. Today's just a day. It's not a good idea to think. And that has rung true to me so many times. And we, especially as women, we have the hormone stuff going on sometimes. Sometimes you just say, it's not a good day to think. Today I go on a walk. Today I do my thing. I can think tomorrow. Oh my god! Okay, so we just don't think so. I I I knew we we're like bodies. Like we think very similarly. So one phrase I say, and I say it to my sister. I like even when yeah. I was a lawyer, I would say it to myself, I was like that's a next week problem. Yeah, that's yeah. not a today problem. That uh-uh. is a next week problem. Because <laughs> sometimes we're just like, I know I'm not being completely rational right now. Yeah. I'm gonna give my brain a break. Right. It's like, I mean, it really is. We we think because we understand self-help, because we know that our thoughts create our feelings, because we know we're responsible for our experience, it's like we're expecting ourselves to control all of our thoughts and emotions all of the time. And it would be like, it's like asking a toddler who hasn't had a nap or a snack to use their brain and do something useful. And they're not going to do anything useful. So just deal with it in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have the same, like, we're all just large toddlers. We still need naps and snacks and people to do our hair and pick out our outfits. <laughs> like, yes. not much has changed. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is right. So let's say you have, like, someone that you're leading or, like, someone you're teaching and they come to you and they're like, I can't seem to pull myself out of the doldrums. Like I do have a big why I do have a big vision and I can't like, I just feel stuck. I hear that a lot. Those are always like, I hear, I feel so stuck. Like, Mm -hmm. what do you say to those folks who are typically like the leader of the pack and they're really Mm -hmm. committed and that's not the issue. They just Mm -hmm. having a human moment. What would you say to those folks? Cause I know they're listening. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think it depends. I think sometimes, you know, as you're describing someone who's, a leader and a, you know, really a go-getter, it is very normal that as we are expanding our abilities and as we're going to that next level, that we're going to experience what feels like moving backwards, what feels like a slump. And so, you, you know, it would obviously depend on the client and, you know, having a read on what's going on for them. But But that's one possibility is that if you've really been growing and expanding or even just making changes internally, right? Stopping people pleasing or setting boundaries or whatever it is, it feels uncomfortable. And don't mistake those negative feelings that come up with the growth as you being stuck in a slump. Look at it as actually moving through it, moving through all of those big emotions because you're getting somewhere great. Yeah. So that, that, and and then I can give you a, another. Yeah. Give me option. the other side too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Please, please do. Yeah. So that's one option. And the other one is, you know, I think there's a lot of value. I certainly see this for me and for my clients. And this is why coaching is so helpful. One of the reasons is the value in space and perspective, right? It, it's kind of like I was saying when I'm in a slump and I know I felt great 24 hours ago, I just have to remind myself of that. And so if you're in a space where you're feeling like, you know, I'm stuck or I'm not getting anywhere, or one of my coaches says, you know, no one's replied to this or no one's replied to that, I think it's a good idea to say, okay, let's back up. Let's pause and take a look at the big picture here. Let's look about all the things that are going well, all the things you've accomplished. Let's put this in perspective so that this detail here or this detail here doesn't swallow you up. And just that pause in space, I think, makes a tremendous difference. And I think we forget to pause because we're so like, go, 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 got to get a little, little, little." and like, we think because we're having a difficult moment that everything's gone to, you know, right. Everything's terrible. 
I yeah. know. Okay, I, so I got this book a few weeks ago that is very important for me. Okay, Judith. <laughs> <laughs> it's 250 Ways to Be More Patient, okay? This is my book. Ooh, this is the book I need, okay? Wow. I've been reading it. And, and it's just, it has these very short things every day. And one of the things the other day that I read said something to the effect of, what would happen if I were more patient? And I started applying this question, thinking about the times when maybe I was reactive or quickly frustrated and thinking, okay, what would happen if I were able to be patient? And I realized that I would slow down. I would be a better listener. I would have better perspective. And so it goes back to that idea of pausing and, and a question like that, right? When you're in a slump, what would it look like if I were patient in this moment? What would it look like if I could pause? And it's like this whole world opens up. Oh my gosh. Okay. And now so you want the book. <laughs> now I want, want the, book, the book for sure. We have a running joke at my church. There's a hymn and mm -hmm. it's talking about praying for patience. And one of the things like you, everyone jokes in my church is like, don't pray for patience because God will give you a test to teach mm -hmm. you patience. Mm -hmm. like, Please yeah. don't, don't never pray for that. So the fact that there's a book about, I think you said 250 ways. Yes, like, 250 oh my ways. God. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. I know. And then I've seen these shirts that say like, they tested my patience and I failed. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so anyway, but yeah, I mean, just pausing for a minute, breathing, taking a walk, taking some space anytime, you're, because it's, it's almost like we have this tight swirl happening inside of us, right? Like I'm so upset or I'm so sad or I'm so frustrated. This isn't working. It's like all these emotions, they just kind of tighten up and tangle inside of us and just moving and getting some space does wonders. Yeah. Or three questions. Like when I coach executives or leaders, one thing I teach them the three questions, does it have to be me? Mm -hmm. Does it have to be right now? Mm -hmm. And does it have to be in this particular way? Mm -hmm. And chances are it's a no and a no. And, a mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. and especially the one that stood out when you were saying that is, does it have to be now? Because I think oftentimes we do feel that urgency. And if something isn't happening and we thought it should happen, it's like, oh, now everything's falling apart, you know? Like I, um, in our community the other day, we were coaching and, and um, this woman had been on a trip and then she had taken time off for the holiday. So she was like kind of unplugged for like a week. And her brain was telling her, she had totally dropped the ball. She was totally behind. And it's like, hold on. We're talking about a week of giving yourself a break in a lifetime. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> so yeah. I know you have a webinar today. Give us a little sneak peek of what you're teaching in there. Oh, so we yeah, get a little sneak sure. peek into your world. Sure. I'd love to. So yeah, this is really talking about... Um, the the new year and making more money in the new year and planning to make more money in the new year. And what I'm talking about specifically in terms of making more money is encouraging different types of questions that we ask ourselves to expand what's possible for us financially. Um, you know, and this can be things like thinking about, um, you know, what questions challenge you to... Um, expand uh, how to make more money. It can be as simple as putting a number on a vision board, right? And asking yourself, how would I hit that number? So um, it, it can be questions like that. And also questions that I say kind of like create a loophole in a money rule for you. Um, and so here's what I mean. more about that. Yeah. What do you mean yeah. by that? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and this applies to all of your clients as well, because we all have these rules that make things impossible in our life, right? It's like, you know, for money rules, it could be something like, well, there's just this rule that's embedded in me that even though I don't want to think I believe this, part of me actually believes I can't make as much money as a man, right? That would right. be a money rule. Or you have to work more hours to make more money is a money rule embedded in us. And so for your clients, whatever it is that in their life that they're trying to accomplish or achieve, whether it's in relationships or at work or whatever, what is the rule that keeps you 
from actually achieving what you want. And then you have to just find the loophole, find the place where that rule actually doesn't apply and it's not true or it doesn't have to be true. Oh, I like that. Think like a lawyer, essentially. Find the loophole. <laughs> yeah, find that loophole. It's there, right? Because I know for me, I definitely thought, I didn't want to think this, but I did find that I had a belief I couldn't make as much money as a man. And I was like, wait a minute. I see this woman over here. She's making a lot of money. And it's a lot more money than all these men that I know in my life. So maybe it is possible for a woman to make more money than a man. It was like this little opening, right? And it's not like all of a sudden I thought I could make all the money in the world, but it was just this opening. It was a space of possibility. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm talking about several things with really important questions to ask ourselves money-wise. And then I really like to help people with planning in a way that really fits creative entrepreneurs because- I'm sorry, there's a reason that we're entrepreneurs and we're creative and we move and we're doing something new from scratch. Typically, you're not going to be completely regimented, very, you know, an accountant. Now, listen, all you accountants out there that are entrepreneurs, don't be <laughs> mad at me. There are there are certain, we we all have different gifts and abilities, right? And what I have found is that when we can really capture a unique way of planning and goal setting and figuring out how we manage our time, right? Like all these very like kind of type A words. When we can do that in a way that works with our creativity and our energy and our abundance, it is everything. And most people struggle with it or feel like time management is like a straight jacket yeah. because they're thinking it has to be an exact certain way. And they're not modifying it to make it perfect for them. So that's oh. kind of, that's what we're talking about. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, they're in for a treat. And if you <laughs> would like to learn more from Molly and get in on all the goodness, like the loopholes, because I definitely yeah. going to pick her brain more about this later. <laughs> uh, where can they find you? The <laughs> yeah, of course I'd latch onto them like loopholes. Ooh, sexy. <laughs> I love it. So you can find me at mollyclaire.com. Uh, right now, I'm just working exclusively with coaches, building their business. I do an advanced certification for coaches who specifically work with women in motherhood, family life. So it's advanced certification for motherhood and family life coaching specifically. Um, but most of the rest of my work is all helping women coaches build a profitable business and a life they love. So that's where you can find me. I love it. And we'll link that in the show notes. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on You're today, chatting with so me. Welcome. And I will say as well, um, I do have a podcast. So anyone who's a coach, the Masterful Coach podcast, talking about coaching, skill, mastery, business, and life. And I have amazing guests like Judith Gatton. So you should come check it out. Yes. And then follow her on the grams as well. So we're going to put links and everything so you can see it and go follow her. And thank you again. So awesome. much fun. Thank you so much. This was All amazing. Right. We out.